What's up guys and welcome back to NBA Files where we take a deep dive in the NBA's most forgotten stars and stories. Today we're covering the case of the big time scoring threat of the We Believe Warriors, my guy Monte Ellis. He may be undersized, but this dude was thought to be better than Stephen Curry just a few years ago. So stick around until the end if you want to get the full breakdown, smash that like button, smash that sub button, and comment who you want to see next. Monte's story starts back in Jackson, Mississippi. He was one of three brothers raised by a single mom, Rosa Ellis. Monte grew up idolizing his older brother Antoine, who was an absolute beast of an athlete, standing at 6'8 and was the talk of the town. Monte was constantly practicing so he could become just like him. Antoine took on the role of protecting and raising Monte. He had been through a lot in one of the most crime-ridden cities in the country, even having one of his best friends killed in a drug deal and kept Monte focused on basketball to stray away from all these dangers and distractions. They were even forced to make their own hoop at their grandparents' house out of milk crates on a telephone pole. The public park was too ridden with gang violence and drug use to even play at it, but the boys persisted through all that. Antoine led the local high school team, the Leonard Bulldogs, to a state championship his junior year and made a real name for this program. Antoine would eventually make a series of very bad decisions involving crime and drug usage, leading him off of the path that he was heading, but he continued to push Monte to stay away from the mistakes that he made and continued to be a mentor for him. When Monte entered high school, he was the definition of raw talent. He lacked the size of his brother standing at only 6 foot and weighing 160 pounds, but he was easily one of the quickest players at his age in the country. With his minimal experience playing organized basketball, Monte was strictly an athletic finisher, but he was damn good at that. Coach Thomas Billups, the uncle of Chauncey, allowed Monte to take over the offense, which often meant that Monte would become somewhat of a black hole. Although his teammates were often left standing around, this allowed Monte to develop into a full-on shot creator. He got a killer mid-range game, and Monte put up some absolutely ridiculous scoring totals in his high school run. Monte in four years averaged 28.7 points per game for the Bulldogs. He won two state chips, scored over 4,000 points, and had a 38 point per game season his senior year. I mean, this was video game-like numbers, and he was just giving everybody buckets. Notable games included a 42-point game on Josh Smith's head from Oak Hill Academy, a 40-point game on Lou Will, and a 72-point game against Greenwood High School. Monte was a monster when it came to scoring in transition and creating for himself. He finished as a co-player of the year with Greg Oden his senior year and committed to Mississippi State University. But at the last minute, he said, fuck that, I'm lead down, baby, and was selected 40th overall by the Golden State Warriors straight out of high school. Golden State was very stacked with experienced guards like Jason Richardson, Baron Davis, and Derek Fisher. The plan was for Monte to spend some time riding the bench and gain the experience through the mentorship of these guys, but the experiment sped up as Jay Rich went down with an injury. Monte finished the year with a 6.8 point per game average on a non-playoff team, but this did include a few notable games like his 27 point explosion in the last game of the year. Monte and the Warriors were liking the fit and the Warriors were ready to give him more minutes. Again, the timeline was jumped quite a bit once again as Davis, J. Rich, and Steven Jackson all went down with injuries. Monte knew that this was his time for him to show what he had and that he did. Monte slid into the starting lineup for the Warriors and put up 16 and a half a game for them. Monte did an excellent job filling the void as a scoring threat that the team really needed. Many of his buckets this year and really every year came in the fast break. He was widely believed to be the league's fastest player in the open court. Monte won the most improved player award this year, but more importantly, Monte contributed to the Warriors grabbing the eighth seed, their first playoff berth since 1994. Any Warriors fans that were around for this season have a very good remembrance of this year. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this was the infamous I Believe Warriors team that stands out even with the record breaking years that we remember now. The Warriors matched up against a prime Dirk Nowitzki-led Mavs roster with their lineup of misfits and frankly, kinda no-names going into the NBA draft. I mean, these guys were like the Stack and Matt Barnes, the Jason Richardson, Baron Davis, Al Harrington, even Monte. These were second round picks, energy guys, spark plugs off the bench. This was the kind of team that they put together. And these boys gave them the work. The Warriors knocked off the Mavs in sixth, winning by double figures in three out of the four. This was just one of those teams that put together a very solid and competitive roster just from pieces that fit like a puzzle. I mean, this was one of the most talked about series from the late 2000s. The Warriors went down to the Jazz in round two, but Warriors fans ate this year up. And this was some of the most entertaining basketball that I have ever seen. 
Moving on to the 08 season, in Monte's third year in the league, the snowball was in full effect. Monte up to scoring to the 20 point club, playing a shit ton of minutes, and the Warriors put up a very solid 40 and 34 record. In the playoffs, they matched up with the... Uh... 2008 was a year which filled a killer Western Conference, which the Warriors couldn't even crack despite being 6 games better than the year before. Tough, man. Well, even though this wasn't enough to get them into the postseason, Monte put up an impressive enough season to get him paid in a big way. The new biggest contract on the roster was paying him $66 million over the next 6 years. Warriors fans were excited that they locked up their guard of the future, and rightfully so. I mean, he was one of the most energetic twos in the NBA for the next 6 years, but they were quickly hit with a wave of disappointment. Monte needed surgery on his left ankle. He had heard it coming down bad playing a high-speed pickup game during that offseason, or so we thought. It became clear that Monte was not telling the truth about the injury as reports came back, and Monte admitted that this was from a moped accident, a dangerous activity that was against the team rules, and he was without pay for the 30 games until his return. The team struggled in his absence, and Monte struggled in his return. They had lost Baron Davis in free agency with the contract that they threw Monte, along with Steven Jackson and Al Harrington missing a ton of games. As one of the worst teams in the league, this was absolutely fantastic for the Warriors. What? Yeah, yeah you heard me. Golden State ended up with the 7th overall pick which they would use to grab another undersized guard out of Davidson. I think you get what I'm saying now. Despite their pick overperforming his rookie expectations in a big way, this was Monte's team undeniably. The team continued to go under, but this was Monte's absolute prime, with him totaling almost 26 a game in 2010. The hype had worn off from the I Believe days at this point. Monte was one of the last players on the roster, and one of their main strengths had become one of their biggest weaknesses. On top of their defense being the worst in the league, their chemistry was non-existent. Monte straight up did not want Steph on the roster, and there was a divide in the locker room, the front office, and in the fan base. This got to the point where the Warriors straight up had to choose between the two. Monte was supposed to serve as a mentor, but the two just could not coexist. As we all know, the Warriors picked Steph, which of course was the right decision. They picked up Andrew Bogut and a deal with the Bucks, which in a way started the rebuild that led to their historic run. But for Monte, the future was not as bright with his new team. Monte would only spend two years with the Bucks before he would jump ship to the Mavericks to join a competitive roster again. His time with the Bucks was really quite forgettable. His scoring dipped below 20 a game for the year and a half and he was there, and he battled some injuries in this time as well. Monte slid into Dallas' starting lineup and actually was very productive in his time on the floor. He put up 19 a game his first year there, but the Mavs would only grab the 8th seed despite winning 49 games. This was absolutely not the time to be in the West. I mean, every star not named LeBron James or Carmelo Anthony was on a Western Conference team. The Mavs would lose in 7 to the eventual champion Spurs this year, which was an accomplishment on its own, but there was not enough supporting pieces to get by on this team. The Mavs would lose in a similar fashion the next year to the Houston Rockets before Monte would move on to his next venture in Indiana. Monte was on the decline at this point, but he was still only 30 years old. He put up 14 a game on a below average team. PG was still in Indiana at this time, but it was beyond the rivalry with the Heat. Monte would continue to decline the next year and decline fast, very fast, so fast in fact that he was bought out of his contract with Indiana and out of the league for good. It may feel like I kind of jumped to that ending pretty quickly, but in reality, that really was how it unfolded. Monte definitely had more in the tank, but the NBA somewhat had enough of him. I mean, in 2017, the league was full on into their three-point shooting era, which is something that Monte could never really do, shooting 31% for his career. Monte was never really very efficient either scoring the ball, shooting 45% from the field on mainly twos. I mean, in a league dominated by numbers, an undersized guard who can't guard his position, can't shoot the ball, and can't score the ball efficiently doesn't really have a place in this league. Which leads me on to my next point. How good was Monte in actuality? I really do not think Monte was a very great player. Monte was never an all-star and never the first option on a good team. He could score in transition and get buckets in isolation, but there was just so much that he couldn't do. I know a lot of Warriors fans look back in awe at his playing days since he really was such a fun player, but he probably wasn't really as good as you remembered. So that's going to do it guys, leave a comment if you disagree, that's totally fine, I'd love to talk about it, or just let me know what you think. Uh, I get back to everybody who comments, so let me know what you like, didn't like, or just say what's up, I'd love to interact with you guys as much as I can. Alright guys, 
That's all. Peace out.